Welcome to this presentation introducing the NSF Access Program. My name is Dr. Joel Adams. I'm speaking on behalf of the University of Kentucky. Welcome to Access. Access is the National Science Foundation's Advanced Cyber Infrastructure Coordination Ecosystem for Services and Support. It's an acronym. It's the follow-on program to exceed NSF's extreme science and engineering discovery environment. It's your starting point for making use of NSF-funded computational, storage, and network resources from the United States National Cyber Infrastructure Research Ecosystem. So we can visualize this. We've got users on the left. We have <clears throat> high-performance computing resources on the right. And in the middle is access. It's the connection by which users can access those resources. What is that? Well, the cyber infrastructure includes high-performance supercomputers. These are machines equipped with lots of CPUs or GPUs. Large memory compute clusters. These are machines with scads of memory. So if you have big data sets to store and process, those are available. There are also special purpose compute clusters that are, some are dedicated to artificial intelligence or composable machines. There are cloud computing resources. There are remote platforms for running virtual machines or containers. There's large scale storage systems, ones that have multi petabytes of data storage capability. So if you've got gigantic data sets and you just don't have any place to store them, Access provides resources for that. There's also advanced networks, high bandwidth networks for production and testing, if that's your research area. This map shows the scattering of these uh, cyber infrastructure resources around the United States. I'll encourage you to pause the video here and look at them. I'm going to go on just in the interest of time. So access is the user interface between the users on the left and those cyber infrastructure resources, no matter where they are in the United States. Access has these different areas, user support, allocations, operations, and metrics that we'll talk about in a moment. So the user interfaces are sometimes called portals. And the specific portals that Access provides are support for allocations, and that is where you can uh, get an award for time or space on the cyber infrastructure. There's a user support portal where you can get answers to questions, documentation, also uh, support directly with a research project. There's operations support that helps with maintaining and creating user accounts, uh, logging in or accessing the cyber infrastructure. And last, there's the monitoring and accounting support that tracks and reports usage. So if you wanna know uh, how many of your resources you've been using or what your status is on them, you can find that out on that portal. There's some vocabulary that comes with access that's helpful to keep in mind. First, a resource generally refers to a particular computational system. So ACES, or ANVIL, or Bridges2, or Darwin, or Delta, or Expanse, or lots of different machines scattered around the country. The resource provider is the institutional home of a resource. So the Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center, or Purdue, or Texas A&M, or University of Delaware, or there's roughly 20 of these. A project is research that can benefit from using an access resource. Credits are generic currency units that you can use to pay for the use of a resource for some period of time. You can get credits by proposing a project in one of four categories. If you're just getting started, the explore category is probably where you want to begin. It's for small exploratory projects and the maximum number of credits you can request is 400,000. The Discover category is for things that are beyond the exploration stage, so medium-sized projects, and you can get up to 1,500,000 credits. 
Accelerate is for large projects, things that are mature. And so 3 million credits is your maximum there. And maximize is for unbounded projects. So if you got a big, massive project that doesn't fit these categories, you can apply for a maximize. An allocation request is a proposal in which you describe your project, its project category, one of those four, explore, discover, accelerate, or maximize, and the number of credits you wish to request for your project. An allocation then is one of these allocation requests that has been approved. Once you have an allocation, you have credits that you can spend for your project. So just to clarify the distinction between access and resource providers, resource providers work closely with us here at access, but they are distinct. Each one is funded individually by NSF through equipment or infrastructure grants. They're not funded through access and access is not funded by resource providers. If you are a user and you want to get to a resource provider, you should at least initially go through access. So you get the things you need to use a resource, like an account, allocation, support. You'd get those through access. You can submit help requests through access even if a resource provider provides its own service or help. And when Access receives a help request from a user, we may forward that on to a resource provider to handle. An Access account is used to log into one of those Access portals we just talked about, support, allocations, so on. You cannot use an Access account to log in directly to a resource provider resource they will have their own user accounts. But you can use your Access account to set up SSH keys that you can then use to directly log in to a resource provider's resource. So how to use Access? There's four steps. First, get an Access account. And you see the URL there. Then learn about the available resource provider resources. We talked about the project categories. Request an allocation that provides you with credits once your allocation request is approved. Once you've got credits to spend, now you can use them. So apply them to a particular resource and then log into the resource and submit jobs that will consume credits. If you want, feel free to pause the video here and check out those URLs. In the next presentation, we're going to begin exploring the Access User Portal that uh, connects them all together.